Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to replace the positive crankcase ventilation, or for short, PCV diaphragm on your Volvo T5. This car I'm working with here today is a 2007 Volvo C30 T5. The T5 engine, depending on the model, does come with a couple different styles of PCV systems. This engine has a heated PCV system and it comes in an assembly with the oil filter housing which is about $300 from the dealer. The other style is a plastic box which includes an oil trap instead and is about a quarter of the price. There is only one source on eBay who makes a new diaphragm. Everyone else just sells a filter housing replacement. The new diaphragm was about $10 and the fastest shipping method to Canada was $50. Eventually, with the heat and age, the diaphragm will crack and break. When this happens, the car will make a howling sound, almost as if you have a faulty idle or pulley bearing. However, the sound will only happen at idle. When this happens, you can only drive the vehicle for a short distance. It will cause excessive vacuum on the engine. If the vehicle is driven for an extended period of time, it will cause damage to your crankshaft and camshaft seals. Another way to tell if the diaphragm has failed is by pulling up the dipstick or opening the oil fill cap in the valve cover. You will notice a strong vacuum. When those areas are open, the sound will also disappear. I have also found the sound is much quieter when the engine is cooler versus when it's at operating temperature. The turbo won't stand boost and if driven long enough, a check engine light will be triggered which may be a P2187 fault code meaning the engine is running lean at idle. Now if you are forced to drive the car for a distance, you can pull the dipstick up, which will help relieve the vacuum pressure. Ensure your engine is cold when working on it. Start by removing the air duct going to the air box by removing the two 8mm bolts on the radiator support. Once those have been removed, pull up the first portion of the duct to unclip it, and then remove a lower portion. You can of course remove the air box completely or move it over, however, I'll be trying to do this with everything in place. As you can see just past the oil filter housing cap, there is another round cap that needs to be removed. If you find the cap is also dirty, I would recommend wiping off the surface to prevent any dirt from falling inside. This is removed by using a small pry tool or standard screwdriver can also work. Either push the tool between the cap and the plastic edging around the outside, or pull up the cap by the little notch cut out in the plastic edging. Careful not to damage the cap or any other surrounding components. If the cap becomes unusable, you may need to purchase a whole assembly, either used or new. The cap cannot be purchased separately as far as I know. Once that cap is popped up, you can work it around to unclip it from the back side. The diaphragm will most likely be in the cap, and there will be a spring left inside the assembly. Then remove the spring. Taking a clean rag, wipe inside the hole to remove any buildup. Mine didn't have much inside, but it's best to be safe. As for how long these diaphragms last for, it really depends on your mileage and driving style. My car has only 133,000 kilometers, and from what I've found, this seems to be a common issue around this mileage. But others I have read have over 200,000 kilometers with the original diaphragm. As mentioned earlier, I purchased this new diaphragm from eBay. This appears to be the only place that makes them. And I'm not affiliated with this company in any way, but I figured it's worth mentioning as I wasn't too fond on spending $300 for a whole new assembly, which has one small component fail. Their diaphragms are based on part numbers from the oil filter housing assemblies, and there is a couple different models available. As you can see, the spring pushes against the diaphragm. The new diaphragm is slightly different, but overall it does seem to have a much more durable design and is thicker rubber. Pull the diaphragm from the cap and now you can see the split which was causing the issue. Ensure the spring is clean before reinstalling. The position of the new diaphragm, the black plastic ring faces down and the spring sits inside this recessed area. With the spring removed and the diaphragm installed, as you can see how it sits inside the plastic housing, the cap has an edge which pushes down on the diaphragm in order to make a seal. Getting this back together can be quite tricky, considering it's such a tight space to work with minimal room and you don't have a clear view, you may need to feel around to some extent. From what I've found, install the spring and diaphragm together. The spring must be compressed and then release it when it's above the hole on its alignment tab. 
You can push the diaphragm down with a screwdriver from the top in between the intake runners, then slowly work the cap into place. Try to snap the cap on the rear first, then finish up on the front. A long screwdriver can be used for added leverage to pop the cap down as it's a tight connection. Start the engine to verify the repair is successful, and as you can see there is no excessive vacuum when removing the dipstick or oil filter cap in the valve cover. As a final step, the check engine light should be cleared, that way we can also monitor if the issue persists. As for erasing or scanning codes on your vehicle, I do have a tutorial on that, so if you need more information be sure to check it out. New videos are released every week on my channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me, and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button and thank you for watching.